Hello everybody, welcome back to the quick take and welcome back to another video on the channel. Now, as you may have noticed, the intro is a little bit different. Yes, I have rebranded slightly. Um, I love the 80s um, ever since I watched, well, I, I, I've watched loads of 80s films. Um, obviously, Back to the Future is one of my all-time favourite trilogies. And I really like that kind of VHS kind of synthwave um, aesthetic, you could say. Um, so I've kind of rebranded slightly and changed my intro and I've now added an outro which you'll see once you get to the end of the video. But before then, make sure you have liked the video and you are subscribed to the channel if you are new. Now getting to the topic at hand, Chelsea are going to be looking for a striker in the summer. Yes, uh, we have had many strikers come to the club and many have failed. You know, you're looking at players like Fernando Torres, Romelu Lukaku, Gonzalo Higuain. Even players like Tammy Abraham, who came through the academy, you know, went on loan to, I think, Aston Villa. Um, Aubameyang is, has just not worked out. Kai Havertz, he's not really a striker, but we're playing him there. Although he is kind of finding his feet at the moment, it's just not going to work out. And we could see him leave in the summer, depending on how many players we need to leave to balance the books. Um, but I've been, I've been doing some research and I've looked into four strikers who I think will be perfect for Chelsea in the summer. Or at least strikers that Chelsea should really consider bringing in in the summer um number nines um we have i'm gonna just listen through now victor ossiman of napoli ivan tony of brentford dusan flavich of juventus and the wild card who will be revealed later on let's get into the video so starting off with victor ossiman yes the napoli striker who's been lighting up the world uh, whether that's in the Serie A, who he is Top goal scorer for Napoli this season and is absolutely lighting up the league, bringing them to the top of the table. Um, he has so far 19 goals and four assists in the league. All goals have been scored from inside the box. 12 have been scored with his right foot and two with his left foot and five headers. So he's right footed and he is deadly in the air. Five goals from headers is very impressive. He's got a 51% shot accuracy. And he's also been very, very impactful in the Champions League. In five games, he's got four goals for the Italian side. Now, let's have a look at some of his attributes. He is very, very fast and he's strong and he's physical. Obviously, him being slightly taller than a lot of players and a lot of strikers in the world. He's able to win headers. He's got a very good leap on him. He's a bit like Ronaldo in that aspect where he can really get some height onto his, uh, into his leaps. Um, he's an elite finisher. He's, he's kind of similar to Erling Haaland in that regard where Erling Haaland just has an eye for goal and you know you give him an opportunity and a lot of strikers sometimes they'll shoot and it's safe but with players like Erling Haaland and Victor Ossiman it just goes into the back of the net no matter what he's very good at scoring from very tight angles I remember watching him play I think it, I think it was against Juventus and he just it was just he my jaw was on the floor just watching him and he scored goals from angles I was like wow okay this guy's different and it's just something sometimes just elite strikers have that natural ability with them and this is something that chelsea's been missing out on for many years now we've been searching and searching for strikers and we thought lukaku would be it we were originally going to go for erling Haaland. i remember the pursuit for heart for Haaland that summer christian falk was well on it um that summer was insane and i think it was rumored we would have to pay like 150 million which at the time was a lot um but looking back now we we should have just pulled the trigger but Ossiman is available for slightly cheaper. He should be available in the summer for around about 150 million pounds. Um, we will be fighting against teams like Manchester United for his signature, but I believe that Ossiman's love for players like uh, Didier Drogba will help us secure his signature. And if we somehow get top four or we win the Champions League, it'll be interesting. Obviously, uh, Napoli have had quite an easy draw in the quarterfinals and the semi finals. I'm pretty sure I saw a stat uh, taking into account odds and that, that Napoli are the most likely team to make it to the final. So who knows, even Ossiman could win the Champions League and then his price would skyrocket to a quarter of a trillion. Um, <laughs> but uh, as I said, one of the things that may help us in the pursuit for his signature is his ties to Chelsea. This is a direct quote from the man himself. Didier Drogba is my idol. I loved watching him play as a kid. I always wanted to be like him exclamation mark unbelievable scenes um he is coming to the bridge uh, <laughs> we are regularly scouting him according to give me sport and according to the chelsea chronicle i called my friends victor ossiman on his visit to stanford bridge 
true this was when he was playing for Lille when he was uh, 21 very early into his career and he was just stunned before he played against Chelsea in that game I didn't sleep after scoring my first uh, Champions League goal because after the game we had a free day the following day many of my friends are Chelsea fans so they told me they don't care if Chelsea win or not that I'm going to score my team's only goal. Ossiman spent the reverse picture at Stamford Bridge in December as an unused substitute, which is just unfortunate, really. Okay, so this is when we beat them 2-0, uh, when we saw Frank Lampard in charge, and Victor Ossiman said, I was happy to be at Stamford Bridge when I walked onto the pitch. I called all my friends via conference call that I was on the pitch because I was happy to be on the grass when my idol Drogba scored many goals. I cherished the moment. Uh, Ossiman has always been open on his admiration for the Chelsea legend. It's obviously clear that Ossiman has looked up to Drogba for many years and uh, I, I can imagine him playing in Chelsea. I can imagine him in a blue shirt and there's even photos floating around of him in a Chelsea shirt when he was younger. But the next player on the list is Ivan Tony. Yes, the Brentford striker. Uh, who has 16 goals and 4 assists this season. 14 goals were inside the box, 12 with his right foot and 2 with his head. And he's on set pieces as well, so he's got 5 goals from penalty kicks and 1 with a free kick. And he's got 52% shot accuracy, so he's pretty accurate with the ball. Um, for, uh, Fabrizio Romano has put out a statement saying, Brentford won't sell Tony for a normal price, so if I had to estimate how much he'd be worth, He'd probably be worth around about 90 to 100 million. Um, he's obviously got that English tax and he's one of their, if not their most important player. Um, and this is just where football is nowadays. You're paying 100 million pounds for literally anybody. Um, but ha however, the 26, the 26 year old has been charged with a staggering 262 breaches uh, for his gambling uh, over a four year period. Um, and Sky Sports believe that he could be banned from football for around six months. Um, so bringing in a player for that amount and then just to have him banned for six months is obviously something that we don't want to do when we could spend maybe 20 million more and get Victor Ossiman, who is an obvious young talent and he's still young in his career. He's 24 years old. So out of the two, I would be choosing Victor Ossiman. But Ivan Tony is no, it's nobody to shrug at either. He's, uh, he's obviously a prem proven. Um, he is, as I said, he's strong, he's quick, and he's just going into the prime of his career. He hasn't been riddled with that many injuries, as far as I'm aware. I could be completely wrong, I could be talking to my ass. Um, but recently, he has definitely been one of the more um, uh, naturally gifted strikers in the Premier League, and he's in many people's FBL, including mine, uh, which was handy because he did haul against, I think, Southampton uh, a couple of game weeks ago, which definitely helps me and saved me some. Um, pain in the weeks because uh, I wildcarded then it didn't go very well but Ivan Tony wants to look at as I said though it does depend on his ruling um, whether he'll be banned from football or not we will see uh, the third player on the list is a player that I actually have a lot of personal love for um, I quite admire him his name is Dusan Vlahovic this season for the Serie A in 17 games he has eight goals and two assists Two were outside the box, uh, six with his left foot, one with his head, two with free kicks, and two with penalties. So a lot like a lot like Ivan Tony, he is on uh, set pieces, um, penalties, and that kind of stuff. But he's got a 40% shot accuracy, so it's not as lethal as the Victor Ossiman or even an Ivan Tony. Um, but in Europa League, he has two goals and one assist in four games, and in the Champions League, he has a goal and assist in five games. Um, he's very strong. He's six foot three, so he's very tall. He's a bit like me in that sense. Haha. <laughs> Uh, he's a big threat in the air, surprisingly quick with his feet, um, and ra actually rather agile. I remember watching Juventus play a game not long ago. I can't remember who it was against, though. Um, but I think Vahovic scored two or three goals. Um, I should be able to find it. Um, anyway, the game I watched, he scored two goals and got an assist. Um, and he was very, very good that match, actually. He was one of the players I was looking at. I was like, wow, okay, he's... He's actually a lot better than I thought because he had a rough start when he joined uh, Juventus. He was originally supposed to go to Arsenal. For those of you who don't remember, in the January transfer window, Arsenal didn't want to cough up the money. Um, it's kind of uh, seems to be a common theme with Arsenal, to be honest. At the moment, in the transfer window, you know, they don't want to cough up the money and then players go to bet bigger and better clubs. Hey ho. Um, but yeah, they didn't want to cough up the money and he ended up going over to Juventus for, I think, 70 million. But uh, Juventus are reported looking for around 80 million pounds for Vlahovic. Um, but as I said, you know, that's 35 million pounds cheaper than Ossiman. But it could also be even cheaper considering um, Juventus have had, I think, a 15 point or something point deduction this season. 
and they might be forced to sell some of their biggest assets in the summer window um, depending on if they get fined or uh, you know maybe they just need the money um, a lot of uh, a lot of Italian clubs actually do need money at the TV rights sold the TV money they bring in is nowhere near what the Premier League brings in we are just elite in that level so they usually get a lot of their money from transfers and I think Dusan Vlahovic could certainly bring in at least 60 to 70 million pounds for them um, I think Vlahovic for 60 to 70 million pounds wouldn't be too bad. He's still young. I think he's as old as Osman, maybe a bit younger, maybe 23. I, I, I know he's around the early 20s mark. Um, so he's still got he's still got a long career ahead of him. He's still got 10 really really good years ahead of him. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I wouldn't I, will, I wouldn't mind Vlahovic at the club. As I said, my preference is Osman. Um, but that leads us on nicely to the wild card, and the wild card is. Goncalo Ramos from Benfica. Yes, in 20 games with Benfica, he has 15 goals and one assist in the league. He's 21 years old, so he's producing elite numbers. All goals from inside the box, 10 with his right foot, 4 with his left, 1 with his head. He's got a 52% shot accuracy, and he is a young talent coming out from Benfica. Um, Benfica are known to produce many great talents like Oblak, Ruben Diaz, Jao Cancelo, Enzo Fernandez of course we signed in the January window on deadline day. What an elite day that was. I remember sitting in con space and just oh that was brilliant watching Fabrizio Romano's stream and just everyone waiting and waiting and I swear I got to like 20 minutes or like an hour before it was it was close. Um, it was like an hour before um, the transfer window shot 10 o'clock and we got the Enzo Fernandez Enzo Fernandez here we go. Sponsored by Heineken. Man, it was just brilliant, man. I loved it. Um, Darwin Nunes, Di Maria, Jao Felix, of course, is at Chelsea at the moment. Bernardo Silva, you know, they, they just, they're just great at it. In the World Cup, he scored three goals and assisted one in four games. So, it's a, you know, four goals and assists in four games. It's not too shabby, especially for a young 21-year-old. Um, young Portuguese 21-year-old. Portuguese players are quite good at football. Uh, Eusebio, Ronaldo, um, um, uh, Luis Figo. Uh, <laughs> um... But uh, in the Champions League, he also did not too bad. And I'm pretty sure Benfica is still in the Champions League at the moment. In 12 games, Gonzalo Ramos has seven goals and three assists. And it would probably cost around 70 million to prime away from Benfica, which isn't too bad, actually. 70 million pounds, I said. That's similar to the amount that we'd probably be paying if we wanted to go for Dusan Vlahovic, if uh, Juventus had to sell him at a slightly discounted price. Uh, but as I said, he's 21 years old and uh, he, he's coming from a league and especially a team that produces talents like no other. Um, but the only problem is uh, Rui Costa fucking hates us. <laughs> we we pissed him off big time in, in the January window with the Enzo Fernandez uh, saga. You know, we said we paid this certain amount for... And so Fernandez, and then we backtracked and said, actually, we're not going to offer that. And then on deadline day, what we, we were negotiating for, I think, 20 hours straight, just give us Enzo, no, give us Enzo, no, give us Enzo, no, give us Enzo, please, no. And then he eventually caved in because Enzo was like, come on, dog, let me go. <laughs> he didn't say that, but Enzo was like, I want to go now, please. So he was like, well, fuck, now I've got nothing to stand up on. Um, so he hates us uh, big time, which is understandable. But it could be a problem if we were to go after Goncalo Ramos. I actually quite like this guy. This guy, I didn't realise how good he was. Fucking 15 goals and assists in 20 games. That's not too shabby. He's 21 years old, by the way. Um, he, he's, you know, he's a, you know, I haven't seen much of him play, so I can't really give the eye test. I'm not going to say like oh, I've been scouting him for the past 10 years of his career, ever since he was in the under 11s or whatever. But I'm just saying that, you know, just look at the stats right here. He's not doing too badly. Um, he could be one to look out for the future and one to get now. You know, in a couple of years' time, he could end up at somewhere like Barcelona, Real Madrid, PSG, even Manchester United or Man City. Although, I, I don't really see Man City needing strikers anytime soon. Erling Haaland and Julian Alvarez, I'm pretty sure, it's just under contract extension to 2028. You know, anything's possible. Gonzalo Ramos is definitely a good player, but... That leads me on to, uh, but that leads me on to finalising my top four. My top four. Actually, I wrote it down, but I'm going to change it. My number one pick would be Ossiman. My number two pick would be Goncalo Ramos. My number three would be Dusan Vlahovic, and my number four would be Ivan Tony. The reason I have Ivan Tony in last place is not because I don't think he's a good player. It's completely down to uh, whether he gets banned or not, and uh, I think a ban could be looming. Um, I think I think he could get banned, even if it's just for three months. That's three months you can't really afford. 
I mean, we saw the impact that have losing Zhao Felix. We spent well, what, what, 10 million on Zhao Felix for the loan, and he was out for three games from a red card suspension. And you know, that was a massive hit for us. So imagine spending like 90 million for Ivan Tony, only to miss out three months of football when we need him to come in and hit the ground running. Um, so yeah, I actually think Osiman, Gonzalo Ramos, Dusan Vlahovic, and Ivan Tony, that's my number four. I've, uh, Victor Osiman is our guy. I really think that he could be um, the striker for us. I think he could be our next Drogba, and I think he could break the number nine curse, which has afflicted so many footballers at this club. If you like the video, please uh, like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the video. Who would you want to sign in the summer? Do you think we should go after Victor Osiman? Do you think we should pay as much as Napoli are asking for him? Who would you sign that maybe I haven't mentioned yet? I've been the quick take and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.